welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the seventh and final video in IB Biology Topic 6, Human Physiology, where we will be looking at sex determination, reproductive anatomy, the menstrual cycle, and fertilization. Every human at birth is either biologically male, XY, or female, XX, characterized by distinct anatomy known as the primary sexual characteristics. The combination of genetic and chemical changes that influence this outcome are collectively termed sex determination. Beyond this, when puberty is reached, there are further anatomical changes, known as secondary sexual characteristics. Whilst you do not need to define sex determination for your exam, you must be comfortable with the process for males and females. For a zygote to develop into a male, the SRY gene located on the Y chromosome must be present. It codes for the DNA binding protein TDF, which stimulates the embryonic glands to develop into testes. The testes are crucial for male development, as they secrete the hormone testosterone from the 8th to 15th week of pregnancy. Testosterone stimulates the development of male primary sexual characteristics, such as the growth of a penis. In addition, at puberty, testosterone promotes male secondary sexual characteristics. These include sperm production, penis enlargement, pubic hair growth, and deepening of voice. For a zygote to develop into a female, the SRY gene must be absent. This causes an absence of testosterone and, in the presence of progesterone and oestrogen from the mother's ovaries and placenta, stimulates the embryonic glands to develop into ovaries. The ovaries are crucial for female development, as they secrete oestrogen and progesterone, which stimulate the development of female primary sexual characteristics. In addition, at puberty, oestrogen and progesterone promote female secondary sexual characteristics. These include enlargement of breasts, growth of pubic and underarm hair. Now that you know how sex determination occurs, you must ensure you can identify and outline the function of the reproductive structures present in males and females. You must be comfortable doing so from a front-on and side-on view. Let's start with the anatomy of a male. The testes are egg-shaped structures that produce sperm and testosterone. The epididymis is a structure located atop each testy, which stores sperm. The scrotum is a sac that holds the testes outside the body, at a temperature slightly lower than core body temperature. The sperm duct is a tube which transfers sperm. The seminal vesicle and prostate gland are structures which secrete an alkaline fluid, containing proteins and fructose, which are added to sperm to make semen. The urethra is a tube that transfers semen and urine. The penis is a muscular structure that penetrates the vagina for ejaculation near the cervix. Now let's look at the female reproductive system. The ovaries are egg-shaped structures that produce eggs and secrete oestrogen and progesterone. The oviducts are tubes which collect eggs, provide a fertilization site, and transfer the embryo to the uterus. The uterus is a structure which provides nutrients and hormones for the embryo to develop to form a fetus. The lining of the uterus is known as the endometrium. The cervix is a structure which protects the fetus and dilates to create the birth canal. The vagina is a structure which stimulates ejaculation and creates the birth canal. And the vulva are structures which protect the internal female reproductive system. Ensure you take time to memorize those structures and their function, from multiple different angles. You can be expected to annotate any diagram in the exam. So, you now know the structures of the reproductive systems as well as the key hormones involved. For your IB biology exam, you must also recall the cycling of hormones that occurs in females. The menstrual cycle is a 28-day hormone cycle that occurs in the female reproductive system during which there is development and release of a single egg alongside significant changes to the uterus. 
it can be divided into two distinct phases. The first 14 days are termed the follicular phase, whilst the latter 14 days are termed the luteal phase. You must recall the changes that occur in each stage in detail. During the follicular phase, egg precursor cells within the ovary, named follicles, develop to form eggs. At the same time, there is thickening of the endometrium. Then, at the junction between the follicular and luteal phases, the most mature egg cell is released from its follicle in the ovary, known as ovulation. The remaining follicles degenerate. During the luteal phase, the follicle which released the egg forms a structure known as the corpus luteum. There is continued thickening of the endometrium. At the end of the luteal phase, the corpus luteum and endometrium are broken down and shed, known as menstruation, or more colloquially, a period. Commonly, the menstrual cycle is represented using a graph, with several lines to visualise the relevant hormones and their peaks at the different stages of the cycle. You must feel comfortable identifying each hormone and describing its role. There are four key hormones two produced by the pituitary gland in the brain, named follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, and two produced by the ovaries, estrogen and progesterone. Let's look at each one now. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.